Good morning, folks. We're watching the Southern Active Region heading for the limb to go to the far side. We've got a couple big stories today, bit of eye candy, and we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. The primary item of note is that the bright active regions are confined to the limbs. We're seeing a little drop in the already small flare production. Coronal hole on the south there coming in as well, with the active regions on the left side behind it coming in next, appearing relatively small in size but have had minor ejecta, eyes on those as well. The solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are quiet, so let's go to the big geophysical event of the day. Magnitude 7 earthquake in Greece, death toll climbing towards two dozen with hundreds injured, and a small tsunami on the Turkish side of the water. Quick look from NASA at the Antarctic ozone hole, the stories of it breaking records may be overblown. NASA reports it as the 12th largest on record, but there are only 40 years of satellite records, so 12th is not so record-breaking. The first piece of eye candy today comes with the Skull Nebula. It is found in the belly of the Whale constellation, where long ago a massive star exploded, and within the remnant the newborn stars are carving out the skull. The gaps matching star light points are indeed where it's being carved. Getting a bit more serious next is they have discovered that the interstellar medium is thicker and denser than they imagined, by about 40%. That's not a little mistake, and it suggests one of two things. Either that the area surrounding the sun is at a higher density than their previous best guesses, or that their best guesses were correct and the density around us is changing, like we're entering a denser wave or cloud in the galaxy. Princeton's McComas describes the discovery as absolutely critical. And last but not least, we're at Barnard's star. It's one of the three stars nearby showing potential activation signs in the wake of the expected galactic current sheet. It was a non-flaring star until the 1990s when it roared to life. After that, Proxima went off, making the sun next in line. And interestingly, Barnard has apparently reverted now to being a flaring star. Two more outbursts were recorded in 2019, slightly smaller in the X-ray and UV emissions seen by Chandra and Hubble. Folks, they want this press release to be about potentially declaring the Barnard system uninhabitable at the planets due to its flaring when 25 years ago, we had been studying it for decades with no signs of flaring. That last part is what's important. We believe the galactic current sheet is engulfing our solar system now, increasing the density and bringing the magnetic reversal of the galaxy that will trigger the solar micronova. Barnard towards the galactic center went off first, then Proxima and A.D. Leo last year off to our side. We're next. Part of the plot is the superflare activity in the wake of the micronova, which clears the dust and gases of the remnant shell and warms the system again. The after flares are being seen now at Barnard. It's 11 days until the full story. Every catastrophist, all the versions, all the evidence, and everything about the next cycle shift ongoing now. Pre-order 1111. We greatly appreciate your support. Also check out suspiciousobservers.org if you are new here and need to do some catching up. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.